here's, here's the kind of thing that I keep seeing, however, which is in manufacturing. So here's a whole list of G we have on a certain date, by product type, by cost center. We had a scrap code, a description, and we had a, a certain amount of scrap. Well, obviously, you know, it, it might be a long time before I find, well, there's a CF-137, and there's a CF-137, and geez, you know, to add all of this stuff up together might be pretty, pretty noxious, right? And so what I'd like to do is turn this into an improvement story quickly. And we see lots and lots of horizontal data like this. So if I take process date, maybe I just want to know by scrap date, I could come in here and say pivot table wizard. Now in the QI Macros 2011, I moved the pivot table up onto the main menu. It used to be down under a, a pull down menu, but I moved it up because I use it so often. So here you can see our scrap weight. And we can take that and say, give me a control chart. Is it measured? Yes. And so this is actually scrapped by weight. And it's going to prompt us for titles over the period of time. This is the range of scrap. And we're going to come back in and get the scrap weight thinking away. So you can tell Excel 27 is a little bit faster, a little slower than maybe I would like it to be. It'll draw our chart. And you can see here that maybe beforehand they weren't very good about tracking things. Um, but in general, after that, we were running about 55,000 pounds a day of scrap, and we had some some out of control points here, and then we'd bring it back into control, and then we go out of control, and we bring it back into control, and then we go, go out of control. You know, I might like to do some analysis to figure out what's going on about these out of control things that keep recurring. But then we can take this and, and literally say, well, maybe I don't want to see it by process date. You know, maybe I want to see it by uh, scrap description. So here's all of our scrap descriptions. We can come down here, select all of that, and say, well, gee, I'd like to see a Pareto chart of that. It'll ask me how many bars I want, and so maybe I want 15 bars because i got a lot of stuff here. And this is scrap by uh, type of problem. And here you can see surface cracks are 21% of the total. Edge cracks, you know, these first three or four are actually 50% of our total, which is what I call the 450 rule. All right, and so the 450 rule is really uh, pointing us towards these top four bars is where we want to focus our attention. And in Excel, one of the things you don't know, uh, let's see, you can actually take this and we could actually do this and, and actually sort it in descending order largest to smallest. And once you have your data in here, you can double click on any cell and it'll bring up all the data behind there. And then we could take uh, maybe cost center and scrap weight. And what I'd like to do now is do another pivot table and I'd like to find out if there's any relationship here. Well, when it comes to uh, surface cracks, it turns out that one cost center is a vast majority of um, for surface crack scrap um, by cost center. And so one cost center is resulting in 98% of the scrap. So this enables me to now go ahead and dig in um, and figure out how to go about, you know, doing some root cause analysis. And I might actually take my fishbone diagram, I might move or copy that, just by right-clicking on it, I'm going to move or copy that into my scrap data by my Pareto chart. And so now I could go in and say during whatever time this was, um, uh, cost center or whatever it is accounted for 89% of surface crack, which was higher than desired and cost customer satisfaction. And at this point, we can figure out who ought to be on our team to solve this problem.
Does that make sense? Uh, so this is a very a straightforward way, and I found that there's lots of data out there that looks like this line-by-line -line kind of transaction data, or in healthcare, it looks like um, these kinds of things. And what we need to do is be able to summarize those, and this will give us insight into our low-hanging fruit. Right? We've always talked about low-hanging fruit. Well, this is where the low-hanging fruit lives, is out in this kind of data. And so we're going to take these kinds of things. And we can very quickly come in and say, give me a pivot table. And the pivot table will give us something that we can then control chart. And the control charts will then lead us into Pareto charts. And that's the structure of how I found that all of the multi-million dollar projects that I've ever solved end up coming into being. And so that's some of the structure of how you go about creating you know, improvement projects quickly. Right? We can come across this way and select the data horizontally and say, gee, I want to see a Pareto chart of that. And this will again give us a Pareto chart of denied claims by hospital which says these top three are 83 percent of our total. And again, we can go in and dig in to that data and say, I'd like to know more about hospital two. And over here, you can see that we've just um, got this description for overlapping data service. And one of the requests that people had was to take just a single column and turn that into a Pareto chart directly. So I just, in December, added that functionality. So it'll go out and count all these things and draw us a Pareto chart, right? So denied claims by type or whatever it is. And you can see overlapping data service really is both of these. And so consequently, what we want to do is go figure out the right people to be on our team to fix overlapping data service. Now, one of the things I do want to show you is counting words in selection. One of the things I found is I, I would run into these situations where they had a, a call center and they were collecting all these comments from all their call center reps, but how do you take this stuff and turn it into a, a Pareto chart or analyze it even? And I used to use the count if function and that used to drive me crazy. So I invented uh, a word count function and word count literally will just go in there uh, slice and dice and pull those things apart and turn them into one word and two word phrases counts of what's going on. So here you can see dupe, data service, day reject, same visits, multiple day, blah, blah, blah. Reject for dupe, dupe data service, day reject, visit same, multiple visits, data service, multiple, same day. Well, if you're in healthcare and you know that the reason we're getting rejected, denied claims is because of this, this leads us in the direction that, yes, all of our calls are also about duplicate data service. So we could reduce the number of calls to our call center just by getting rid of all these duplicate data service uh, denials. Does this make sense? So there's some, a lot of tools in here to help you uh, diagnose these kinds of things. And in the QI macros um, uh, for 2010, word counts actually right under the pivot table wizard. We have tools in here to unstack uh, things by label and column and things of that nature. We have examples out there. Uh, we have a paste link function and a paste link transpose. The paste link transpose is something Excel does not do, but I think we ought to, it ought to do it. 